it's time for you guys to, uh, to say a few things for yourself. And uh, we can begin with my friend Luisa, and she is uh, an expert on public psychology, so she can help me. So, what is that with Luisa? So, what would you want to say yourself? Oh, uh, maybe you want to say about, well, you know, how far you're here and how you can help. And, uh, sure. Well, um, Paul and Lillian and I are working on establishing some initiatives in positive psychology here in Canada. Um, so we're doing a lot of work, um, both in academic arenas as well as trying to get a network of uh, positive psychology practitioners across Canada. So um, I, I wanted to know more about Paul's work around meaning because positive psychology is such a broad umbrella around well-being. And Paul has um, done such a depth, uh, Paul and Lillian have done so much work in the area of meaning. And when I think about my own happiness and where that comes from, it certainly comes from a very, very deep sense of meaning, I think more so than, uh, although there's a good dose of positive emotions in there too. <laughs> so I think that uh, it is so important to, you know, even if you think about relationships, it's all part of trying to build a meaningful life, isn't it? You know? mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. So that's why I'm here. Jessica? Um, I'm Jessica, and uh, I'm a graduate of the program that uh, they founded uh, in Langley, in Trinity Western. Um, so I work in counseling, and uh, interested in thinking to recognize the centrality of meaning, and I'm um, interested in both, you know, meaning center therapy, but uh, um, also in my own personal journey, I guess, uh, meaning questions have become all the more salient to me in the last few years, and so I um, have both kind of a professional and a personal investment. For now. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, just because uh, we my family, we just immigrated here uh, in 2005. I come from Beijing. Uh, in China, we have a very good job. And then just for the children's education, I have a Chinese daughters. So we come here. Right now, my daughter is now in the university. For me, it's very simple. Before, we just start hard. We, we was in, uh, in school, we started hard, uh, we work, and we do a good job, but uh, now I need to communicate with my daughters, and um, I want to learn how to communicate with the youth, how, yeah, how, uh, yeah, I'm, I, I cannot understand the name very well, but I hope I can learn, and uh, learn this by, and like the, this is another science, another topic. So uh, I was the senior IT engineer for me. I don't think too much before, but uh, now I have to think about for my daughter and how how, how can we can learn together, uh, uh, together and grow up together in this new country. So that is the reason I'm coming here, learning. So, so you, you were in here before? Yeah, I was senior intern in China, yes. And then, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so I don't know the psychology, the science, oh, okay. just uh, the mathematical or computer something very simple for me. <laughs> I didn't think too much, but I still feel, uh, when I was in China, I feel meaningful, right? I like the job, enjoy uh, doing my yeah, job, uh, yeah, working mm -hmm. and stuff, right? So, but uh, I know why today for the use, like uh, the something become complex. Uh, How old is your daughter? <laughs> they are uh, around the 22. Oh, okay. Yeah, is, yeah, is, yeah. Is she in university? Yeah, they are in university. And the, another, uh, another, another said is um, they are twins. A twins? Oh. Yeah. So. Uh, I hope they 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 for each other, but then maybe just because they are twins, they, then they they didn't and they, they don't have enough social life. That is, uh, I'm worried about it. So I want to 
know and want to learn how to encourage them, what is the motivation for them, uh, make new friends, and so you come to meet with my sister Jennifer. She's also a twin. Oh. Remember on the meetup, she is two people. <coughs> she and her twin sister Karen. Oh. <laughs> so for the first long weekend, she had people from Hong Kong visiting their family, so she can come. Yeah. It's interesting, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my name is Jesse. I'm uh, in grade ten right now. I go to uh, grade ten. Yeah. Going into grade 11 next year, uh, I go to Holy Trinity School. It's somewhere in uh, Richmond Hill. And uh, uh, I guess I came here because my mom is friends with a professor, the professors. And I also have, like next year, I want to take um, an introduction to um, sociology, anthropology, and uh, um, uh, psychology and stuff. So it kind of interests me because I can't, like when I think of the word meaning, I can't put a, def like, a perfect definition for it. I don't know how to properly you know, I don't know what it means because it all mostly I know is that it's something, it's like what your life is going to be and what professor said before. You know, right now a lot of you, once they go into like ages of the grade, grade 11 or grade 12, they're still trying to think, what am I going to do with my life? You know, you know, it's it's like, it's, it's tough for me to picture how, because it's it's kind of tough for me to see what I'm really good at in terms, and then I don't, it, it's just hard to see the future with meaning, you know, with your life eventually. Maybe if I can know what it is, so eventually I can just, you know, get a good life for myself. Yeah, very good. I hope that we can get more young, young people looking at part of you. <laughs> your, 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 your daughter. Yeah, how I can motivate them yeah, to join. <laughs> tell them, you know, so they don't want to see them. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name, my Chinese name is Dou Mei, and my English name is actually Ocean, as for Wang, Wang Yang Da, for Wang. Ocean. Yes, ocean. ocean at the Pacific Ocean. Um, mm. I guess after years I got fed up with people asking me how to spell my name, so that's why I had to pick an English name. I thought you that. Yes, your Chinese name is right. That's right, Lillian. Um, I, um, I was born in China, uh, Guangzhou, and then I came here after my freshman in China in the university, and I went to Trent, and that's where I met Lillian and uh, Professor Wong. Uh, in the Chinese fellowship over there. Um, for me, um, I agree with uh, Professor Wang that you know the meaning of the life is that uh, towards the end of your life, for example, if I'm going tomorrow, and then if I ask myself, you know, have I lived a fulfilled life? Have I had regrets that I really wanted to mend so badly? Okay, I, I always had regrets, okay, all the time. But, but you know, like it wasn't something that I felt like it was really so bad that I had to, you know, like uh, mend it right away, right? Because life is a learning journey. Um, so I graduated from Trent and then I started to work for um, insurance company and then I got married and I had Jesse and then I had a divorce. I still have Jesse, <laughs> which is the best thing that happened to me. And then I went to work in China for an American company for four years. And then I came back and I set up my own business, still having business in China. So um, that has been basically my life. So when Jesse, I can understand why Jesse defined the meaning of life. Because when you were younger, your parents told you is that what you're going to do is your life, career-wise. Okay, or is it really my life or is it just part of my life? And now I know it's only a small part of my life. What I do for career, what I do in an everyday business, that is a part of my life, but it's not my life, okay? However, I'm not going to correct Jesse because he will find his own way, he will define his own life. I can't really put my module of my life on his head and say that. I know better than you because I'm your mom. I have eaten more salt than rice you ate in China, right? <laughs> and that's a definition for Chinese is that when you get older, the older generation has more wisdom than the younger generation. And I don't know whether that's right all the time because we might be having more experience, but am, are we going to be wiser than them? Only time can tell and only the individual can tell, right? So that's why as a mother, I suppose that I'm willing to let my son to make his own mistake and set his own path. However, I'm here to tell you what I think. And whether to accept it or not, it is up to you. 
And I think with Jesse, I encourage you to come to this seminar because I have noticed that for teenagers, okay, actually 20 is better. When they're 15, they're worse. Okay. <laughs> because there was a time that they felt that they were adults, but they were actually kids. They wanted to do adult thing, but then they don't really have the maturity to handle what become an adulthood. Okay, so it was really tough for them going through that stage, and I saw that coming, you know. And, and, and I'm very lucky to have Jesse because at least he communicated with me and then we talk on an equal basis, you know. I don't really think that I know better just because I'm a mother, but I really respect him for what he does. However, and I have found that kids in their age sometimes really worries me because, I mean, I'm a mother, single mom who drives them to sports, to match, to everything, right? So I usually have carloads of kids that are from the Indian, they are... Africans, so I have, you know, like kids in my car that were different colors, okay? So they, they would talk about things and then there's sometimes, I don't usually get into fear, but sometimes Jesse thinks that I'm a bit, you know, like uh, annoying. <laughs> because I would tell them that certain things, in my opinion, are not right, okay? And what are the things that are not right? And I said that, not because you didn't get 80% or 90% in your work, but when you bully people, when you trash talk people, when you're not kind to people, that is wrong, okay? Because that's sort of like part of the meaning of your life. It's every day, can you be willing to give a little more kindness instead of, you know, like um, just being hard on other people or feel your happiness based on other people's suffering? And I said that is right and wrong. Thank so you. that's why I take Jesse here because I said, I said to him, you will learn a lot from other people. Thank you. And John? Uh, my name is John. I'm, uh, first of all, I'm glad to be here, to be embedded among a group of uh, people who are positive thinkers, apparently, and, um, and uh, obviously I'm here also to, um, to get a little enlightened about this concept of meaning. Of course, I, when I heard all the stuff I've heard so far, i kind of uh, been reflecting on in my life, and, and since I'm getting on, I sort of uh, thought, uh, well, you know, you know, I've been... Um, I've had bouts of unhappiness and happiness throughout my life, and um, and you know one of the things uh, you know I, you're talking about your um, your son here, and I I wish I had the opportunity like him to be here like so many years ago. I'm not really myself, <laughs> but um, you know I grew up. My parents died early, and I and all the things I've learned. In my life, I learned basically by myself, more or less, with the help of some teachers through secondary school and university. But, you know, um, the times when I felt unhappy, you know, I, I always sort of wondered, you know, I you know, I asked the perennial question, why, 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 right? And it still dogs me today. But um, I, I wanted to point out that one of the things I learned, maybe in a book, I heard somebody say it on a TV interview or something, number nine on your meaning and version. Do the right thing or face the consequences. That has been sort of my mantra for many, many years. I can't say how long, maybe at least a decade. And whenever I had to make decisions about certain things, especially very crucial things, I always thought that if I did the right thing, um, it would be the right, it would be um, I would not face adverse consequences. And I would be happy, and I always did that. When I separated from my wife uh, way back in the mid '80s. I did all the right things, you know, I had to, like you, I had to separate, I was really happy. Um, it was a sort of a long-term euphoria, it wasn't just a short-term before. I was glad I got out of the relationship for whatever reasons, but it's like, um, you know, I did all the right things, I, I, you know, like certain things I did. I, for example, she supported me in university, and I made sure for years after I left, you know, I. For the little job, the, the non-job I had, I made sure I, I sent her money to make sure she can get a chance to go back to go to university if she wanted to. Mm -hmm. So those are the sort of right decisions I made, and I always thought, wow, I feel so good about it. And I would never face the, the consequence of like feeling guilty or you know uh, thinking that I'm such a bad person and you know I'm, I'm grateful and whatever. So um, anyway, so that's just a little. Peek in, a little peek into my life, and I um, so I, I continue on the quest for uh, greater meaning, understanding what, <coughs> what my life is all about, and how can I be more happy 
I'm relatively happy, but I, I know there are lots of gaps in different aspects of my life. And I thought perhaps that perhaps when I'm in here and I learn and grow in the knowledge and about different things, about meaning, I, it might uh, make me feel more self-fulfilling and um, happier. Thank you. Okay. Hello. <laughs> <clears throat> um, a couple of months ago, I realized that um, working 14, 16 hours a day wasn't as fun as I had thought maybe it would be. I never really thought it would be. Anyway, um, uh, I haven't really kept in touch with any of my friends from uh, high school or university, so I see them now maybe a couple times a year. Um, and I figured that a meetup would be a great way to meet new people and find a bit of meaning. So when this group popped up, well, it just made a lot of sense. Here I is. <laughs> so, I, um, my name's Rob. Um, I first uh, started thinking about meaning-related questions in an uh, undergraduate, undergraduate course. Is actually, uh, the central focus was on Viktor Frankl. It's called Spirituality in Psychotherapy. And it really associated the spiritual aspects of meaning. And when I took that course, it really made me realize the difference of intrinsic versus extrinsic sources of meaning. And I found myself at the time struggling with that, that, that uh, big difference between what I saw society you know, promoted as the, the source of meaning and values and the things to strive for. But I, but I also found just as very Correctly, as Victor Frankl pointed out, that it left people with a huge existential vacuum. And so I looked at that discrepancy and I was really intrigued by Victor Frankl's psychological insights into, into that very issue as, as, as when what happens when people follow an extrinsic source of meaning that they're provided for by their culture instead of really thinking, well, does it really match with what I really believe? And I found that to actually be a, a huge source of struggle, and it's not easy, as Fra Frankl said. And so I, I became very interested in the issues of mental health and how that relates to meaning or lack of meaning. And so I went on to pursue a master's degree in the philosophy of mental health. And, uh, and uh, from there, I'm, no, I'm now enrolled in a psychology program online. So I'm doing my PhD in psychology now. And I hope to do counseling, and I'm very interested in the meaning-centered meaning counseling approach because I feel that it matches with all that I've learned and how it can help people who are struggling with issues of meaning. Okay, you can just pan the camera. <laughs> that way, not important. No, no. Um, okay, I'm going to try to condense as much as I possibly can right now. Um, my first interest in psychology started at a very young age for me. It was around eight or nine. Um, when my when I found out that my grandma had schizophrenia, and the first initial interest was out of fear because like it, it's it's very it's difficult to see someone go from being um, I'm not going to say normal there's no one who is really normal but being a certain way to me and then changing like that and the interest came into how the mind works and and then it started to grow from there. I entered university in 1998. Um, finished with my BA in 2002, uh, came back into the real world and wasn't happy. So I went back to do my honors. Um, that's when I met Dr. Hurt, um, who introduced me to Dr. Lee Wong, Dr. Paul Wong. Um, he became my mentor at the University of Windsor and he, 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 I think maybe he saw something in me that I didn't see, but he kept pushing me to do more. He said, this is something that would be good for you. So. Push. I um, finished my honors, wrote a thesis, um, a quantitative thesis, and then I did my master's at the Michigan School of Professional Psychology, and they specialize in humanistic psychology, which is very similar to positive psychology. And I think what excited me about coming here today, and I talked to, to Dr. Wong about this, was that I've been out of school now. I graduated my master's in 2000, no, sorry, yeah, 2009 and um, came back to Toronto and it's been very difficult for me trying to move forward because the humanistic um, practice is, it's, it's, it's not new in any means, but because it's not, a lot of it isn't research based, or so they say, it's been harder to take off, especially here in Ontario. 
So joining this group, um, I'm hoping will allow me to open up my psychological horizons. Um, hopefully I can, I can learn more and see what I need to do to, to do more with my degree. I'm very interested in positive psychology, counseling psychology, spiritual, everything. I've, it's something I've wanted to do for a while and now it's just that frustration of not being able to do it. So I was hoping by meeting with some people, it'd be a great way for me to network, learn more. And I want to make a quick comment about meaning. I heard everyone saying things during their open discussion. And you said something about having one foot in the grave kind of thing. Yes, me. for you. Um, I, I've kind of learned to live my life like I have one foot in the grave at all times. And I, I say this to my friends all the time. I don't know in the morning if I'm going to wake up and survive my whole day. So I do my best. And I fail at times, but I do my best to try to live every single moment like it's my last. Because you never know, it, death can take you at any age. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any age, you know. And I, I'm, it's a, it's, I've kind of turned, tried to turn that fear of death into more of a positive thing to drive me to like excel any way I can. Mm -hmm. so, so, so that, that will be. Where's that? What number is that? Nine. Nine. <laughs> that nine. Nine. Nine again? Uh, that terror and trust and suffering and death, yes, sure. that's where I am right now. So I'm sure you'll learn more about me as we meet again, but that's where I stand right now. I got your turn. Thank you. Um, I'm Edgar. Um, I sell technology, and I'm on a quest for happiness. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Short and sweet. Short and sweet, efficient, right to the point. Yeah. Hey, Claren. Um, I'm Claren. My name is Claren, and. Uh, I am just in the point in my life where I'm in transition, like I'm going through a lot of changes and um, I've always been interested in meaningful, everything meaningful and I read meaningful books and I, all my books are meaningful <laughs> and there's nothing that's, you know, and, uh, um, and in spirituality and anything like that, I'm always interested to live my life in a spiritual way. And um, I, I don't, I don't seem to like superficial talk and superficial things, so I stay quiet a lot. <laughs> so um, you know, so when this group came up, I thought you know this would suit me because I'm always um, interested in anything meaningful to make my life happier and healthier and um, have well-being in my life and to help others as well with whatever I um, I learn to help others in, in my life. Uh, so we are the right group. Yeah. 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 And uh, we'll turn on. Is it still taping?